Welcome to the Chaos's podcast, proudly distributed exclusively by Heavy Magazine, the Southern Hemisphere's largest metal publication. With us today on the show is the lead singer for A Killer's Confession and ex-Mushroom Head frontman, Waylon Revis. Welcome to the show, Waylon. Thank you for having me. You know, it's like, it's so weird, you know, doing this because, you know, it's 12.40 a.m. here. What time is it there? Uh, We've just gone 4.40 in the afternoon. Oh, uh, I remember it was 4.40 this afternoon. <laughs> I think I took off on my drive. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so um, we'll just bust into the first question. Um, So we've actually just caught you on the tail end of coming home from being in the studio. Can you yes. let yeah? Can, can you let us know a little bit about what you were doing in the studio? Um, I'm working on our fourth uh, full-length album, uh, Victim One, uh, nice. finishing vocals, uh, like going out and did the single, have uh like just got there on monday night and just finished today sunday it's monday morning now yes so uh (laughs) you know it's like just been there the entire time just mashing songs out and like i've had ideas i've been working on this album since late october early november and finally just at that point to where vocals are done um, going into mix and master, and, and we should be seeing the final results in the like next week or so. So and and so on 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 the topic of the album, you, not so long ago you released the single "Tongue." Um, yes, yeah, that I mean it, it's a great song, huge song. Uh, you you seem to have returned back to the the more heavy side of your roots with some of the horror themes. Yes, is that, is, is that an indication of 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 what we're going to see? Not now. Um, there are heavy elements. I mean, tongue is tongue, you know, like sure. it's like you don't want an album that is completely just beating your face in like that from start to finish. I have always been an artist and you can go back to the mushroom Head stuff. I've always did this like it could be creepy, but it could be melodic at the same time. And sure. I, I accomplished that. I mean, yes. Is this a heavy album? Yes. But is this an experimental album at the same time? Yes. It, it Like, what I did this week, I didn't even know that I could do what I did. Like, nice. I'm saying awesome. this right now, like, it was, uh, we did a song, and Julie, my wife, is a very hard person to impress, mm-hmm. and a hard person to, like, be like, oh, that's cool. You know, like, she's just Julie. That's, that's her. I love her to death, but that's my <laughs> wife. Yes. And for her to go, wow, what, play it again, wow, like that's not my wife. My wife is like, oh, that's good. On to the next thing, you know, like sure. she, like she loved Angel, she loved Numb, she she loved certain songs, but she's never, and, and this with anybody, she never just goes, wow. That's awesome. Um, so, um, yeah, you're obviously coming down to um, Australasia in October. Uh, any uh, indication on uh, what you might be doing? Any surprises that you might be able to shed some light on, or, or what, what? What can the fans expect? There, Which Waylon are we going to get? You're going to get the Waylon you're seeing right now. You're going to get the tongue Waylon. You're going to get the old mushroom and Waylon. You're going to get the theatrics. I, I'm not coming down empty-handed, so to say. Nice, nice. Uh, um, I'm going to bring as much as I physically can um show wise and nice. uh you know which is not including myself but like when it comes to like that that visual that everybody's seeing everywhere with the akc show and what i've done with mushroom Head, i'm going to bring as much as i possibly can down there and i'm probably going to like push myself to the point of exhaustion and passing out because it is a, such a long flight that you know it's like I think as soon as we land we go to rehearsals and then after rehearsals we hop on a flight and there we go you know that's that, yeah, that's gonna, yeah. gonna be and uh it's it's gonna be go 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 but at the same time I'm preparing myself I'm I'm finishing up the AKC stuff I'm doing here and uh you know I have Lee joining me coming with me to, to Australia but the other guys are sitting back staying home and and we're just gonna go test the waters you know, in Australia and, and try well, to introduce you guys to a killer's confession properly. And, uh, but while at the same time doing the mushroom head stuff and, nice. uh, like he, I'm trying to get everybody a little bit of what they want. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Now that's awesome. No, I, and, and, and the fanfare and the buzz down here is, is, is real. Um, so it yeah. is crazy. I, I like, I see it and I'm like, wow. 
Like, we've been, and it's we've been, been waiting a long a time, bro. Yeah. It's been almost a decade. And, yeah. and what I did at Soundway, I hold myself to that level. And that was my last experience there. And granted, we were not doing those huge places like this this time. We're, we're mm-hmm. doing a more intimate setting, but like the intensity and what I plan on bringing will be the same. And I, I, from what I'm reading, Andrews is planning the same thing. So yeah, yeah. I think you guys are going to be in for a treat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. There seems to be a lot of pop and uh, heavy metal at the moment. Uh, you've got some quite strong feelings on that. Would you care to share those with us? Well, it's not that I have real... Like I have real strong feelings. I just like I see a lot of metal guys becoming pop stars, sure. and vice versa. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with pop melodies. I mean, let's just get that straight. But sure. if if you're metal, metal, um, we're not Michael Jackson. You know, we're <laughs> against the grain. Um, if it, it's like, and, but I don't mind if you take that kind of stuff and lyrically and conceptually twist it. In a way mm-hmm. where it's like a, a play on it in a way because i think pop melodies are some of the best melodies world in the world i mean there's not one of us that doesn't like a michael jackson song sure yeah there, you, 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 you you cannot be a fa- you might not be a fan of him but there's a song he's done that you you're like yeah that, that's good yeah. you know <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to metal, I just feel like a lot of bands, but I think it's the industry too at the same time. Sure. I think it's just it's the fact it's such a crunch in the social media and with hip hop and this country and mm-hmm. you know, pop, all just like it's just all crammed into one. It's it's becoming like this ball of goo. And I'm not sure that metal artists really sit with that. I I sure. think I think that, uh, you know, it's like you're getting, you're misconstrued on what we are. We are the, we're, we're the devil's advocate, you know, sure. like a, a metal has always been that though. Metal has always been that against the grain, saying things that are not as popular as, you know, people would like to believe, but they're not. We're the ones that, that question authority. We're the ones that question everything around us and i feel like that's been lost and a lot of bands just going along and just hook 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 and that's pop and it's like that's cool if you're going to do it but at the same time remember who you are remember be the question be the objection be that you know metal is a voice and metal is a power and i say this in a way and i'm not saying i'm powerful or anything like that i'm saying it is it's it's this Metal just, you know, is that we're the we're the stinking sons of bitches in the back alley. You know, remember yeah. that we're we're not in the forefront. You know, we're we're not about being pop stars. But that goes back to punk too. Punk cool. really in like old school punk really embodied that. Didn't give a shit at where if I'm if I'm allowed cuss, I'm sorry, but yeah, didn't sure. give a shit. Yeah. It's about um, you know, it's about that message, and I just feel like it's all just like, let's get to the hook as quick as possible and just toss out a pop song. And it's just like, man, that's not metal. You got a great riff, but man, I don't know where you, I, it's like. There's no substance. Yeah, so sure. To say. Yeah, and metal's, and, and, and metal's always been on. like the counterculture, and it's sort of been man. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and I, I guess that's that's part of. The assimilation into pop culture from counterculture is probably what what's happening that we're seeing. And and you know it's like somebody oh you're just old you don't know what's hot you know it's mm-hmm. like well you know it's like I know what's real yeah and uh, I know what what moves me and talking about you know fashion and just you know dumb stuff that make the you know that makes no sense at all that has no real effect on my life i like hearing a song that you know like black sabbath i'm going to be listening to you know uh fairies wear boots for the rest of my life i won't be listening to war for the rest of my life i can't say i've heard a song like that that i'm going to be listening to 20 years from now yeah and 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 i'm being honest like like when was the last time that something so anthematic and so you know, groundbreaking and, and moving and meaningful is going to stand the test of time that long. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Like, you know, I, I didn't run for the hills. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel it. I feel it. Cool. Um, all right. So um, now moving on from that, 
Uh, there's obviously been a lot of demand we've seen online for you to deliver a potential mushroom head set in the States. Any message to the American fan base? I don't know if it'll ever happen. This might be a one and only deal. You know, nice. it's like I'm doing this for the Australian fans. And nice. it, it was, it's a part of a thing that, you know, it's like the way it had to work. You know, it's like this is what I have to do. But at the same time, I've not done this. And so long in Australia, you know, being the fact that you guys don't get the tours and the stuff like 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 here in the States, it's just it's just an everyday thing. There's something to get the club every night. Yes. You know, there's one it's one of the stars is there every night and to go down there. But my last experience here was just so amazing. It's still like one of the greatest moments of my life coming to your country it was just like, I love you guys. I love I love being there. I love uh i just love the culture i love I, I love the animals even though every one of them can kill me <laughs> <laughs> i love them all equally and nice. uh and, but it just like i feel like it's been long enough it's time to do it you know it, it may be the last time but i can't get you a definite answer i don't i don't see it foresee it happen happening sure. again after this yes. but that's what i think makes this so special too Indeed. is the fact yeah it's about being a once in a lifetime thing that i do nice nice no and we fully appreciate it too there's obviously uh, an, a rising tour costs um and there's a lot of uh large artists uh on online um fairly disgruntled about not being able to go out on tour um because of these rising costs is there any advice or any 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 anything that you could pass on to other musicians that they may be able to take on board in terms of making touring financially more feasible well first of all you got it's like with any business you got to downsize um you got to cut cost where the and, and the first cost is your bus you need to get rid of your bus you need to stop thinking that you need to, you know, be in this lavish, you know, uh, vehicle to get to tour tour. And I understand it's like, well, I got a crew. Well, it's called a sprinter van, you know, downsize, uh, going because I bought a sprinter and then, re, uh, set up the entire, um, inside to be like a Prevo, um, bus. And if, and you can see that on, on, um, um, bus invaders, right? It's oh, actually I've, I've watched it. Yeah. 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 Uh, good. I did that, but I sa I save so much money because you got to think when you're you're driving these huge vehicles and mm. you got many of them, mm. you got to downsize. You know, it's like even when you factor in, it's like, well, I got three of them. It's still cheaper than three buses. It's mm. still cheaper mm. than, than two than than a one mm. bus mm. because you're paying the driver. You know, getting a hotel every night. You gotta you gotta downsize and you gotta make it work for your business. Just like anything else, it's like mm. you gotta look at what the market is. And then how how far is your money going? You gotta mm. look at gas. You gotta budget. You gotta be smart. And uh, like like with AKC, I could put us back in a tour bus, but I choose not to because like I bought everything, and it's like you know I'm I'm getting the same job done mm. at uh, 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 not even a quarter of the price. You know, it's yes. like yeah, I could go out there and throw my entire you know, uh, any kind of profit that was going to go back to the band to go back into the band to do recording or pay the guys into a bus. But what's the point of that? If you're just going to go out there and go homeless. So yeah. you got to start there. And the, and that's the first thing, like everybody looks at, well, the tour bus, tour bus, tour bus is the first thing I eliminate. Mm. First thing I eliminate is tour bus. I, then I, I eliminate, do you really need extra people? You know, mm. what, who is not needed now granted with these stadium shows they need the bus they need the the, the tractors and trailers and that that's understandable because you're hauling all these trusses and all this massive massive equipment but if you're not on that level hmm. and you and if you are at a, at a theater club level back it down to uh, uh the sprinter vans or uh what we call here in the states the bandwagon like i cut out um, hotels, everything. We'll go uh, to a Planet Fitness here. It's ten dollars a month, and I'll mm -hmm. go get my shower. Yeah, I'll yeah. Work in the lot and sleep. You yeah, know? it's like, I, and then I'll go in, go work out, wash, get yeah. the car, go. or I'll stop at a Flying J or, or like a truck stop. I don't know if you guys have those. No, like, uh, really. 
uh, is, uh, you know, the, the, we have these things called flying J's and pilots and it's all the truckers will stop at night to, sure. because they're only allowed to drive so much. And then yes. you get these places and there's nothing more beautiful than to sit between two trucks yeah. running yeah. is the greatest sound in the world. And it will knock you out. You don't believe it, but like it, just the rumbles of those engines. <laughs> that's nice. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah. And, and it really does work, but like, it really is downsizing. It, it, it's a lot of downsizing. Like we run with a bare, bare, uh, skeleton crew. Mm. Um, we will run with, we like run with the sound guy. And then sometimes I won't because like, uh, if a, if a sound, if a good sound man is running a house, he knows his, how his house sounds and he'll yes. make you sound good as mm. long as you'll talk to him. Mm. And the key word is talk, not yell at him. Mm. You'd be like, okay, this is what we want to try to do. I'm going to sit out here with your sound check and figure it out. And I usually have a good time with the sound guy. Like, yeah. cause I'm able to, Explains like this is what AKC is. Mm. Let's go from here. Turn this up. Turn this up. You're going to be perfect. Set it. Forget it. Slap chop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, cool. So, um, just moving on from that. Um, so, uh, this may be a little sensitive to discuss, but uh, a, a few years ago, you had a cancer scare. How's the health now? My health is good. Um, I go back in. Um, they were able to cut everything out of me and uh, okay. like have to go through anything major. Um, like it was very, very early, early stages of it. And uh, I had to be more under a supervision to make sure it didn't uh, be uh, like the, the way the doctor take root. Um, they had to cut everything out. And uh, like I got prodded for a good year and a half after that. Just like, oh, you're good. Like I got so bad. I'd go to my dentist, pull my pants down. be like, oh, wrong doctor. <laughs> well, it's, but, it's uh, yeah, it's it's obviously good to see that you can have a laugh about it now anyway. In the States, uh, you guys are suffering from uh, venues taking merch cuts. That hasn't affected us down here. Um can you explain a little bit about uh, what that what what's happening and how badly is it affecting your bottom line? Well, the fact is, this has been happening as long as I can remember. Sure, um, it's like a fifteen percent, and they say it's towards taxes in the state or or providence or whatever. And I get that, but when you're talking anything anything above that. Mm. I got issues with like a 15% is fine. I, I'm, I'm willing that you brought me there, but you know, you start asking for 30 or 40, I'm going to be like, well, I want 20% of your bar. Yeah. Like, and, and <laughs> that, they'll make the arguments. Well, if you're not selling anything to anybody without us, well, mm. you're not selling any booze mm. without the band. Mm. so like it's a two-way street there yeah. yeah and uh and you can win this argument if you're smart and you understand the business be like you know it's like 15 percent. i'm okay i'm okay with giving you a cut you gave me a platform but if you get greedy on me mm. i'm going to get greedy right back mm. and be like well let me see your bar tab mm. no fair enough cool all right um that's that's been an awesome uh, little chat there brother um so before we end this, is there uh, any message that you've got to uh, your Aussie, Aussie and Kiwi fans? Any anything you want to part with? And I'll wait to see you guys. Oh, hold on one second. One second. You get off of that. <laughs> my cat decided to cut uh, scratch on my leather. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mom will get mad if she sees that. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see you guys. I, I really can't. Uh, New Zealand, especially, I've never been there. Uh, beautiful country. I'm, I'm dying to get there. So, guys, just give me a couple more months. I'll be there, and I promise you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deliver. I'm gonna give you guys something to remember, and hopefully, it won't take me ten years to get you there again. That's nice. Well, thanks very much, Waylon, for uh, coming on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. Sorry it took me so long to get home. No, no, no worries, brother. Okay, and you can catch Waylon live throughout Australia and New Zealand this October on the New Metal Mayhem Tour. On the next episode, we'll be chatting with Anders Colsefni. See you then, and keep it heavy. <laughs>